It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports. And we've got a showdown in the AFC North. It's the Steelers and the Bengals coming up next. From the banks of the Ohio River, there's a look at Paul Brown Stadium here in Cincinnati, Ohio. This crowd loves their orange and black. The scene just a short time ago, they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football as the Bengals get set to do battle with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and CD, you look at our quarterback matchup in this ball game. That's where the focus naturally gravitates, and I think we have a fairly interesting one here. And I think for me, and this isn't an original thought by any stretch, and probably for these two head coaches as well, the key for them is going to be limiting the turnovers, limiting the free possessions. I mean, this isn't saying anything you don't already know, but you've got to be able to make the most out of your drives and see if your defense can help you out and take the ball away from the other team and give you a few extras. Evan McPherson about ready to get this going as we are underway now from Paul Brown Stadium. Taken at the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. So the Steelers offense getting set for their first drive. And leading them out there, we get a look at their 6-3 quarterback. And what I enjoyed watching this week when we had a chance to watch them in practice the easy camaraderie that he has with his offense. A lot of respect. A lot of respect, and frankly, I thought it spilled over to the defense. All the defensive guys were coming over and teasing and joking with him. You can tell they respect the heck out of him and really want to play well for him. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Off play action, pick it. Oh, he's going to air it out right away. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Well, they certainly came out firing in this one. And while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. Second and ten. Off the play fake. Pick it. And that'll be incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Crowd getting in it a bit already. Here's an early third and ten. Back to throw. Pick it. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. 
And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Here are the Bengals on offense, and here is Joe Burrow ready to lead them at quarterback. Hey, we all love a good story, and what we like even more, guys who can fight through adversity. Joe Burrow coming out of high school, goes to Ohio State, doesn't get a chance to start, transfers to LSU, not thought to be a top prospect, ends up the number one pick in the draft, and justifies it. Tremendous play, excellent mobility, and leadership off the charts. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at their own 26. 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. The former second round pick, this is Joe Mixon, and he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. It's second down. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. Meanwhile, Burroughs throw into the hands of Sample. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Here we go. And the Steelers now in the nickel here on third here down. Can, can. Got we got three. We got three. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And running with power here. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. Now Burrow on first down. Throw left side complete to Chase. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 38. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. Fighting to stay upright. It's a loss of 10 yards on the play, and it'll make this a second and long. connection on a nice in route with those faster passes when they're going that fast any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection if you miss might be bigger and lead to an interception yeah and the deflection works both ways maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well but a moot point there is they were able to connect and he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sideline thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Five yards remain on second down. To the air again, Burrow. He gets this one to Boyd. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate, gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that would be pinpoint here. Uh, so I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. 
Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Miles Jack charging hard from that linebacker spot, and he drops him for a loss of 11. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. The sack by T.J. Watt, or as his mother Connie calls him, Trent Jordan Watt. So that time, Charles, a uh, quarterback helpless, really, in the pocket in the face of a pass rush like that. They were on him instantly. And this came from the edge, and those pass rushers, they have so many tricks of the trade to get around blockers. They have a lot of tools in their kit. This was pure speed and athleticism on this play, though, and they could barely get a glove on him before he got the quarterback on the ground. Third and goal, Burrow. This goes out wide for Mixon, and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Give him 13 yards on the connection, but not enough. Fourth down. No, there certainly was a lot going on on that play. Every option in the end zone covered. No place to go with the ball. Had to swing it out to the back. A good job running and getting him tackled in the open field. So on fourth down, off goes Burrow. On comes Evan McPherson for the Bengal field goal. McPherson's kick is good. And the Bengals are on the board first here. It's 3 nothing. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like, whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. Here's McPherson now to send it away. Gunnar Olszewski bringing it out. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy lick come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. Nothing after one on EA Sports. Steeler football here to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a first and ten.
Now a give, running left is Harris. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. They'll get this to his tight end. That's Pat Fryermuth. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. A couple of first downs has the football position at the 43 as they come up first and 10. Operating from the gun. Pick it. Here's Fryermuth again. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Looking to throw. Pick it. He sets to fire deep. And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of Good keeping work, the boy. toes in bounds there. Let's go. A big connection on that one. 35 yards. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process. And really, it's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. No sense risking anything there on first down, even though he's still in the pocket. He had a receiver out to his side, so he'll just put that in a spot where the only people who can make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. He gets it complete to Harris. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. The catch good for six yards, but now it's third and goal. That's a nice design there. But sometimes, though, you get so many blockers out ahead of you, they kind of slow you down and force you to adjust. You always appreciate guys trying to help you, but maybe one less there could have turned this into a bigger game. Harris. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Najee Harris, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Steelers have taken the lead. So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. Certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This will be fielded inside the five. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. 
it's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10, just shy of the 30. He'll hand it off here. This is Mixon. And this will go for five up to the 33. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Now it appears we have a stealer here slow to get up. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. Bengals on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and seven. Here's Burrow. He's going to loft one deep left side here. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. A big play there for Cincinnati. If there was one knock on Joe Burrow coming out of LSU, you know, it was arm strength, but kind of put those doubts to rest right there. And you'd think on third down, they'd just be looking for something right beyond the sticks. And I think they caught the defense flat-footed as a result because they decided they were going to take a shot right there, and it ended up being a big play. And the final number on that throw, boy, it traveled an even 69 yards. Now it's Burrow. This is caught. Nice gain of eight that time, but it's second and goal. That's it, baby. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? Now whistles and a flag, and I believe a Bengal got going a little early there. And that'll set him back five. Still Things made a little more difficult after the false start as they try again on second and goal. Now Burrow, and he fins him off. But now he's swallowed up and taken down. Cameron Hayward, what a play by him. That's going to go as a loss of 13. He continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. And these sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, They've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Now it's Burrow. He's got his big tight end. That's Hurst. That time, 12 yards on the pass play, but still shy of where they needed to go. Fourth and goal. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. McPherson's kick is good. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high.
Here's McPherson now to send it away. Olszewski going to hold on to this one. Go, Touchback. And the Steelers set to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. They'll start to drive with Harris. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report. But business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coaches' two-minute drill. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. On the delay, here's Harris. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. Now a timeout called for by the defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. yards on the punt two on the return and possession will switch hands first and ten here again comes Joe Burrow in the offense for the Bengals and yeah, maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit he's playing pretty well but the pressure it's got to him has to find a way to step around it step through it or just handle it because as you mentioned he's having a pretty good day overall just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks that's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much uh, he'd like to stay upright when he's been upright he's been pretty good here we go. the Cincy hey. offense about ready to go here on their next drive their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals. And that's caught inside the 35. And he does take it in for the touchdown, but a flag on the field. And I don't think this is going to stand. Yeah, don't put the points on the board just yet. Would have put him in the lead, but hold that thought. Yeah, the celebration had to stop, didn't it? Because now you're on a real uptick. You're in the lead. Instead, you're still behind. Have to find a way to regroup. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Incomplete. Hayden Hurst, former first round pick, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Here we go. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Burrow looking to pass. Got a man open. It's Chase. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you can just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. 
He'll air this one out for Boyd. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's gonna bring up fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started, and that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty, and before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Good coverage there holds him to just a two-yard return this. following a punt of 44. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. The Steelers taking over now late in this first half. And they've got just under 50 seconds, so time enough to try to work their way downfield if they so choose. First down, pick it. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Yeah. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. It's forthcoming as he'll look to throw. Right side, Claypool's got it. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. From the gun, pick it. And a dangerous throw there on the drop off. Incomplete, nearly intercepted. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Here's second and ten. Back to throw again. But he's got his target, Harris. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A big play that time through the air. 34 yards. A lot of running backs in the passing game, they're just used to check it down to them or maybe dump off passes. But this guy, they use him to stretch the field, don't they? He stretched it right there, turned it into a really nice game. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the left hash, this from 46. And Boswell's kick is good. And they bump the lead up to four now at 10-6. Maybe a little fortunate there. That was leaking a little, maybe leaking a lot, but he got it. Yeah, he actually was able to make it work. How about the body language, though, right? As he watched that ball leak to the right, trying to try to bring it back in and had just enough to get it done so six seconds all that remains of this first half is the kick is away this one fielded at the five and his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Here we go. 
No reason to do anything foolish as they'll snap it one more time on first down. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Steelers out in front. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though, let's take a look at the next-gen stats from the first half for the Steelers. And even though they've got a halftime lead, they're likely devising ways as we speak to try and get a little more production from their passing game. Meanwhile, for the Bengals, they too found some success throwing the football. But I think both teams would say there's room for improvement in the second half. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. The Bengals with work to do in this third quarter, but they'll get the football first as we are back underway. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. It's been a tight game to this point. What do they need to do, Charles, to break through in the second half and take the lead? Well, I think the first thing they need to do is thank their defense for keeping them in this game. And you know what I think the defense is saying back to them? Why don't you guys focus on getting some first downs, put some drives together, give us a little bit of a break here. If we can get some rest, we'll play even better for you. And oh, by the way, pay off a few of those drives with some points too. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and 10 here. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And incomplete on the deep ball. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll look to throw here. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And this throw will be intercepted. The safety Terrell Edmonds picks it. And the Steelers are going to get the football here at their own 23. The first half did not go their way, and that's not going to help matters at all. An interception here on the opening drive of the third quarter. Obviously not what they were striving to accomplish, but you know who's really upset on their team? The defense already trailing. They're going to be counted on to try and hold that score at least where it is. Time for the Steelers offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. And their defense just helped them out by getting the football back on the opening drive here in the second half. And now can the offense follow through with points on their first possession? And that's a big one for them because after the work the defense has done, they've got a chance here to open up this lead. A handoff to Harris to begin the drive. Wiggles free. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Getting out a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. They run again with Harris. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. 
Back to throw. Pick it. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion force there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Operating from the gun. Pick it. He'll take a shot for the end zone. And it'll be incomplete. Good job staying with him defensively. And it'll bring up second down. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. On the give, this is Harris. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass, but in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right, it might go to them in this game. I like that, MVU. Well done. Try to lay one up deep, and that is intercepted. Or was it? Wait, they'll say no. No interception. He did not keep the feet in bounds, apparently. So that's just going to be an incompletion. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. And good hustle here as this is going to be blown dead right let's at go. the nine-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Throw left side, caught by the tight end, Hurst. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Now Burrow on first down. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. On second down, here's Mixon. And he will fight his way forward to about the 23-yard line. 
They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. I have to think a major focus of the halftime, Mings, had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Once again, they run with Mixon. And he's got a Bengals first down as he gets this up past the 30 to the 32. So that's what that elbow in my ribs was all about. You thought they were going to throw the ball as well. Absolutely. I think everybody thought they were throwing the football. Caught him off guard. Yeah, I'm telling you, when you have the courage to make that type of a play call, a lot of times you actually get rewarded. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Burrow will throw. He will find his man Chase complete. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. down here's Burrow this is caught it's Boyd and they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds now what we're seeing this is much better from this offense because so far in this game no touchdown to this point and what's usually a direct correlation very few explosive plays that's been their issue not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off but a nice game there for a first down So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. They go back to the ground now with Mixon. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. 43 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. And hey, when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. They're passing here. Joe Burrow. He's got a man. It's his tight end. That's complete. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. They'll give it to Mixon. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. It'll be a pickup of four, and it winds us down to the end of the third quarter. Three quarters have come and gone. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. It's the Bengals. They've got the football, but they trail here as we get rolling in quarter number four. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. They're going to look to throw, and that'll be caught. Touchdown, Bengals. It's Tyler Boyd. 
Two yards on the touchdown. And the Bengals are going to jump back in front. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it works very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that gives him a three-point lead. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. Taking it about the one. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. And now they'll look to answer working from behind. And remember... This offense has sputtered yet to score here in the second half. They'll need to change that here. On first and ten, Pickett. Open man, that's the tight end fire move. Uh, he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. But when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, he's good now. He's got a chance to be great with plenty of work. To throw on second down. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. The Clemson product, D.J. Reader, got in for the sack. A CD, you know, so often we talk about quarterbacks holding on to the ball too long. Well, we can't say that there. He had no time to do much of anything. And this came from the interior of the defensive line. And these guys, they're normally anchors of that spot. And they don't often get clear shots at the quarterback. But in this case, he got past the center and the guard in no time and got there to make the play. He's going to let this one go deep. And it looked like he got the feet down, did he? Yes, go, it's a catch. A big connection Ooh, wow. on that one. 32 that. yards. Well, this is where an offense needs to show what it's made of. And in fact, where a quarterback needs to show what he's made of. Trying to engineer a fourth quarter comeback. And he hits a big one right there. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. From the gun, pick it. That's complete to his tight end fire move. That catch good for only a couple. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Looking to throw on second down. Pick it. A short one there to fire me. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. They'll look to throw again. And that's going to be incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Wow. 
So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Again, he'll drop to throw. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 15-yard line. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. Flushed out right. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll get three yards on the scramble there. It's second down. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. On second down, it's Harris. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. His size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Looking to throw. Pick it. Eluding the pressure right. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. A 13-yard touchdown run. And the Steelers have once again taken the lead. The play of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown on the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here, and they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. Extra point now by Boswell. And that will make this a four-point game. A 10-play drive that time, and it's capped off by a 13-yard touchdown run. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. up the Bengals here first and 10 at their own 25 yard line they'll try and start this drive in the air and this is incomplete we've got to give out a little applause on that play it has to go to the defense more good work by them they've taken away the passing lanes all game long and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Here's Burrow. That's the tight end, Hurst, with it. it. Gets by him, and now a little daylight. The 40, 20, 10, 5, and all the way in for a Cincinnati score. 
And boy, see, you know, it's one thing to watch a great run, but when it's a great run with broken contact, it's like a cherry on top. That was a nice play. Yeah, this is a guy who runs with such balance and control. I mean, he went through that early contact just like he was driving over a speed bump. And he's able to continue his way downfield and wind up in the end zone. And you can see the distance traveled there after the initial contact and the next-gen stats. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that gives him a three-point lead. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Pittsburgh offense making their way back out. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are. But with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. Doesn't matter where you start with the football now, they have to feel great about their opportunity. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Throwing to start the drive. Pickett, flush to his right. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. To throw on second down, pick it. He's got his tight end, Fryermuth, over the middle. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. Come on, baby. This is it. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. They come up on a first and 10, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. He's got Claypool, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. First down now, but that clock rolling. He'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. <sighs> That's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. He's back to throw. Being chased out left. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts. As they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. to throw and this is going to be incomplete that means it's just one last chance left and this has to be a first down or a touchdown or this game's over it's a 
One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. That's to his running back complete. And he is trying to get to the marker. Going to depend on this spot, but I'm not sure he got there, and he did not. So now let's reset here, Charles. They do have two timeouts left, so they can stop the clock twice. This one's not quite over yet. No, and what you're doing on defense, you're going to use both timeouts, obviously. But you've got to call defenses are going to force the issue early, meaning you want that play over fast. You don't want to give them time to dance around in the backfield or run a wide sweep that will take off time. Blitz them, put pressure on them, make sure that play ends quickly so that you can go ahead and keep moving. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. They try to eat some clock with Mixon. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. The Bengals go down to a knee in the victory formation. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it here with a minute seven remaining. go down to a knee in the victory formation. And with a third and 13 here, the defense in a dime look. Burrow down to a knee, and that should be the final act of this one. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. Here's Kevin Huber now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And wow, the fair catch was signaled for and taken inside the five-yard line. Well, Charles, a pretty exhilarating finish to the end of this ball game. At the end, the Hail Mary prayers, though, they went unanswered. Could have won it, but couldn't get it done. Almost fell schoolyard or playground, didn't it? Yeah, you remember when you called that play? Everybody just go long <laughs> and try and find someone open. They gave it a shot, but unable to successfully complete it.